Hey, welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we're gonna to talk about five things that New Zealanders complain about. So these are things that I kind of think are kind of make me laugh or they're like, oh, it's interesting that that bothers you. So here we go, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. The first complaint that I'm gonna start with is that they don't really complain too much. Now, I this is not clickbait. I didn't just like pull you in here to be like, oh, they don't actually complain. No, they have things to complain about. They think things to complain about, but they don't always want to complain about something. For example, if they didn't get the right food or they didn't like their food or something wrong with in order or something, they will generally not complain about it. They will generally not send it back. They will not say anything, which can be very different than like what a lot of Americans do. So just keep that in mind. It's not that they don't have the complaints. It's that they don't always want to. For them, it just feels imposing or not the right thing to do or unnecessary, whatever the reason. But I have been here for seven years now, and so I know that there are complaints. I've heard the complaints. I've read the complaints, but they don't always act on them. And also being a public figure, a little bit, a little bit of a public figure, I get a lot of complaints, right? Because it's easy to type something uh, on social media or on, behind a computer. And so I do hear the complaints. So... But the first one I just want to talk about is just to be honest, though, they don't really complain a lot. I mean, it doesn't compare to Americans typically, like if you're going to do a generalization uh, in terms of like how much people complain. But so they don't always complain. But there are a couple things that they complain about that I think are very interesting. So on to number two. Number two, a big complaint that I hear that kind of makes me laugh is uh, when people don't stop at a crossing at a pedestrian crossing. So in New Zealand, if someone is crossing the road, it's not, it's not uncommon for them to not really, I mean, they're kind of looking, but they're just walking out into the road. If it's a crossing, they're expecting the cars to stop. So obviously if you're from like New York City or another big city in the US, it's like people aren't stopping for you. <laughs> and so it always makes me laugh because I don't always think about it because I'm not used to thinking like always stop at this crossing. I'm of course much better at it now, but it just makes me laugh. Sometimes people like in the car with me or I hear and them talking about it, that they get really mad when people don't stop at the crossing where it's like, you know, you just need to realize though that you are a person and then this big, huge, metal object is moving, just maybe you should also look as well. That's all I'm saying. But it's just funny when they complain about it. Also, people complain if people don't. It's expected that when you are the one walking across the, the crossing, that you wave and nod or give a give an eye look um, when somebody is stopped and just thank them, which is really nice. And I'm seeing it in very small children through teenagers and adults. And I think it's a really great quality, but they do complain when you don't do that as well. Number three, people not waiting in a queue. <laughs> this one, I gotta say, it kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> the fact that New Zealanders are so into staying in line, staying in the queue staying in your spot. And in a lot of situations, it actually doesn't make sense to do that, especially if we're talking about traffic queues, because people will literally knock it out of line and go and pass, you know, you're just, you're actually keeping the traffic from moving, <laughs> but like they will stay in line. And like, if you, and like, they just get really mad and you know that they're mad because they're either beeping at you or yelling out the window or something, but like, they like to stay in the line and they expect you to stay in the line, which can be an adjustment, I think, for people coming from very, very highly populated areas where you kind of need to push and shove a bit to get where you need to go because there's so many people. Um, when you're moving to a country that doesn't have a lot of people and they like to stand in line um, or you're from big cities where like you know how to maneuver traffic, they don't like it. They don't like it. You'll hear about it. So yeah. New Zealanders like to stay in queue and they don't like it when people try to get out and maneuver themselves in front of you. Are you moving or traveling to New Zealand? Well, I have a resource for you that is going to be so helpful. I know that journey. I have done it firsthand. 
I've even done it twice. <laughs> I understand what you're going through. It's so exciting, but so daunting at the same time. You have so many questions and have no idea exactly what to do about different situations, especially if you've never even been to this country. And so this resource is something that I have created. It's called the New Zealand Training Hub. And what it includes is video training on how to set up life here, understanding the culture, understanding how things work here. And so it gives you like that head start. So if you're a planner or someone that like kind of, there's enough new things that it would be nice to just understand how to do things in a new country. So if you are that person, this training hub is for you. Not only does it do all of those videos, but it has a community built in. So when you join the training hub, you get access to the community of people on the same journey as you. These people could be like your best friends and they probably will because all of us have made a friend when we first moved here that we're kind of going through the same thing and that's who we learned everything from. <laughs> but they also didn't have someone like me helping them out with some video trading. <laughs> and in addition to that, you will have access to me every month. I'll do a live Q and A just to answer any questions that might not get answered in the training hub. You can also request additional trainings. There's really no reason to not check this out. So why does it make sense for an American to be talking about what life is like in New Zealand? Well, let me tell you why. Because a New Zealander knows no different. And so it needs to be someone who has come into the culture and saying, oh, this is different. Now, I don't know everything. I only know my own experience, but I am a really good resource to say, hey, this is how they do this here. This is probably not how they do this in your country, or maybe it's different. And so you really need that outside person that knows the differences. So if you're moving or traveling to New Zealand, this training hub is for you. Check it out. Number four, and I am going to say this the nicest way that I can say it and present it to you. New Zealanders, or especially Maori people, if you pronounce any of their language incorrectly, there's like, no, they don't like that. There's a lot of people that are like, hey, thanks for trying, but there's an also an equal number, if not more, that are complaining that you're not saying it correctly. And so, uh, they kind of expect perfection when it comes to speaking their language, which again, is nothing wrong with it. But then when people are trying, I think for me, with my Midwest American accent, I struggle to say a lot of the words right. Like I, I have taken classes, I have really tried. I have honestly, with the right intent, with the right attitude about it, trying to learn it, and still I get a lot of people complaining to me <laughs> that, oh, you said this word wrong, or how dare you talk about our culture and say things wrong, and it's like, just so you know, that it's probably not the best thing in the world that you are expecting perfectionism by people that just have a different tonage in the way that they talk, because I don't know. I don't know if I can ever get every single vowel sound correctly, um, and I really try. And so <laughs> I do get a lot of complaints about that. I hear this a lot, and this is just being really honest with you. Um, that I think that it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think that it's not that we're saying it wrong. I think that it's really hard to change. Maybe probably if you're older, even harder to change. My kids do a lot better than me. Changing the way, you know, like to me, I, it sounds right, but to you, you're telling me that it's coming out wrong. And so there's definitely some <laughs> complaining about that, but I think it's great that the, the language and the culture and the ways, um, of the Maori people are coming back and are really um, being integrated into society. All of that really all good things. But just be aware that people coming in and you know, people are trying their best to speak your language the best that they can. And number five, we need to talk about safety. The biggest complaint that I hear on my social media that I hear out there, of people like just on the internet in general is that New Zealand is not safe anymore. It was safe like 20 years ago and it's not safe anymore. And it's just, <laughs> it's one of those things that kind of makes me go, <laughs> makes me chuckle a little bit because like what youth, nobody should feel unsafe. I don't think that that's a good thing, but there's different levels of feeling unsafe, right? So somebody from where I'm from, who's who lived close to the inner city, who gun violence was normal, you know, my level of safety, I feel real safe here. Let me just say. Now, there's no perfect place. There is crime here, there is robberies here, there is gang violence here in New Zealand, but it just, 
it's not at the same level, you guys. When I say I feel unsafe, I feel unsafe at a different level. You know, like I've talked about this before in videos, your kids aren't walking, you know, through metal detectors or having active shooter training. Like it's, it's a different mentality. Like you can't take your eyeballs off your kids in the States. Like actually bad things happen often. Like you'll talk about the rise in like guns, say in, you know, New Zealand, but like, you know, the amount is like 20 some in a year, whereas we're having like 20 some in a day of, you know, firearm, you know, things that are going on. So you're like, okay, like, it's just, it's just not the same level. Now, of course, where you live in the States will matter. I also lived in a pretty dangerous area. And so, but I'm just saying that they complain that things are becoming unsafe. But what I'm saying is that it's a matter of perspective. So there you have it. Number five, safety.